this, this is going to piss off some folk. Two, on the other hand, is going straight to the top. Okay, this next one's probably where people are going to start getting angry. Okay, so instead of doing just a normal trophy update, we're going to do something a little bit spicier, and we're going to rank all of my Platinums that I obtained in 2023. And they're all here. We have the list. Let's see how many people I can piss off in one video. So for the first three was when I started the alphabet thing, which we're not going to talk about. But Assassin's Creed Origins, I did in January. I did this quite quickly as well. Um, this is one I've done before. I really do enjoy that game though. Of, of the three modern Assassin's Creed games, not counting Mirage, I've not played that. This is my favourite one. I don't know if it's Egypt or Bayek or just the fact that it's the smallest <laughs> of the three. Um, but I do have a soft spot for this game. That being said, I don't think it quite reaches those upper echelons of gravy, shall we say. So it's probably just going to go slap bang in the middle. We're going to kick things off with an I quite enjoyed that. Arkham Asylum on the other hand, which was the second Platinum I did. I think I did that. I think I did both of these in like a week each. In fact, I did the first three in like a week. Um, but Arkham Asylum, I'm going to slam straight into Little Nightmares. I know Arkham City did a lot of things better, and I know it improved on the formula in a lot of ways, but I have a soft spot for Arkham Asylum. Just the atmosphere of, of Arkham and the fact that it's all contained in such a small area, it's just so cool. I mean, we're not going to talk about the ending boss, because that could possibly ruin the entire thing, but even playing it on hard mode this time around and doing all of the challenge rooms and stuff, I still really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the entire experience, so we're gonna we're gonna put it straight up to the top, off the bat. Callisto Protocol. I didn't hate it like everyone else did. I had a great time with this game. Maybe I just don't have the nostalgia for Dead Space as much as everyone else did. The game's not perfect by any means. It does have a lot of reused elements throughout the entire story. The story itself isn't, you know, the best thing on the planet, but. I still really enjoyed it and again links to all these videos will be in the description because I did do one for each of these but that's also going to go straight in so I quite enjoyed that. The same cannot necessarily be said for Need for Speed Unbound. I love the Need for Speed franchise. It's been on a bit of a roller coaster in the last few years I won't lie but Unbound looked like it was going to be a bit of a return to form at least for me anyway and what I wanted and in some ways it was but it still kept a lot of the stupid mindless open world garbage that the series has started doing since probably payback and for that reason it's, it's going in it was all right i don't quite regret it but it's not you know it's not up there white shadows on the other hand i very much enjoyed it reminded me so much of little nightmares like the aesthetic the art style it really just caught my eye and the platinum itself fairly straightforward. There is one super annoying trophy that requires you to get through a particular section without dying, but I still really enjoyed it. And I'd say possibly, no, it's going in gravy. It's going in gravy. Horizon Call of the Mountain, the first VR Platinum I've ever gotten. I have such a affinity for the Horizon franchise. I know a lot of people don't really, but I do. I still remember my first playthrough of Zero Dawn. Call of the Mountain, on the other hand, while I do love it and while it does speak to me being able to actually be in the world and see all of those machines in real life as if they were like right in front of me, epic. The gameplay on the other hand, it left a little bit to be desired. There's a lot of climbing. There's a decent amount of combat. During fights, you're on rails around the edge of the arena with whatever machine you're fighting in the middle. And it just feels like they could have done a bit more with it, in my opinion. Like I get why they did it, because these things are hard to keep in frame on non-VR games, but yeah, you get the idea. It's definitely better than Unbound. I'm probably gonna slap it in, I quite enjoy that. Okay, now this, this is gonna piss off some folk. Yep. Okay, it's it's a bit of a running joke at this point how much I hated this Platinum. 
and again have a video for it it'll be up there somewhere i really really enjoyed the story and i liked the extra bit of world building it did but my god those side missions if you can call them that were just abysmal <laughs> like i get it it was a psp game so there was only so much they could have done on that hardware why didn't they address some of that when they remade the bloody thing i don't understand it was boring repetitive bullshit and it needs to stop then tale of paper <laughs> This is one I saw, I can't remember who it was, so I apologise, in an Easy Platinum Trophies video. And it really did catch my eye. Again, similar way to White Shadows. If things invoke a feeling of little nightmares to me when I see them, I kind of have to play it. Because it's like my whole thing at this point. Taylor Paper was fun. It wasn't the best. There's collectibles, there's... It's again, a little bit of a puzzle platformer with a bit less of an emphasis on the puzzle part. It was alright. It wasn't anything breathtaking but yeah the horizon games yes i did redo these this year it was actually for a video that never got made i challenged myself to get both the platinums including the dlc for zero dawn before the dlc for forbidden west came out and if you're at all interested i did actually manage it i got with two days to spare i think before burning shores came out i really i just love these games i really do forbidden west was great and i loved a lot of the quality of life improvements that they brought to the game i love the new machines but something about that first game just wow just brilliant so for that reason that's going in gravy Forbidden west is probably going to join all of the mountain Thing. Jedi Survivor. Now this is a, this is a spicy topic. I did not have any of the technical problems a lot of people did with this game. Sure, it ran like me through a muddy field, but it was awesome. The combat was great. All of the new stances were awesome. I loved the story. I loved all the like High Republic stuff. Some of the side stuff was a, a bit bullshit, but it's still probably gonna go in. I quite enjoyed that. I don't think it's quite gravy. It's not Little Nightmares, but it's definitely better than it was all right. I've, I'm quite happy with where that is right now. Now, the Dark Pictures franchise. Yes, I went through and did every single game back to back, including the VR. Was this also for a video? Kind of. Did it get made? No. The VR one did. The VR one did. But it was also for D in the alphabet because I decided, why not? I'll challenge myself. I'll do five games instead of one. We're going to... We're going to... Cut to where I've placed all of these, and we'll see what happens. Boom! There we go. All of them placed. Let's sort of go through from bottom to top my thoughts on the games as a whole. Little Hope's definitely the weakest of the series. The story's not all that engaging, the characters aren't that great, and I mean, then there's the ending. Spoilers for the Dark Pictures franchise, okay? Little Hope ends. It was all in his head. Like, everything was in his head. The bus driver that was missing at the start turns out to be the main character who you've been playing as the entire game. It felt a bit like, oops, I guess nothing supernatural is going on. Uh. And they already did that with Man of Medan. And Man of Medan is just a more concise experience, in my opinion. The characters are more likeable. Comrades adds a bit of levity to the game. I just enjoyed Man of Medan that little bit more. Like I said, I've mellowed on it a bit since. Yeah. I'm quite happy with those two. The VR and The Devil In Me, the only two games in the franchise I hadn't played before. VR one was good, I enjoyed it. If you want to see me absolutely crap myself, the video is up there. Uh, the Devil In Me, I really enjoyed the story of this one. It's not my favourite, we'll get to that, but the whole sort of HH Holmes vibe really spoke to me. I'd say considering it was the only one I hadn't played in terms of the main four, I did quite enjoy it. House of Ashes on the other hand, I, I, I love that game. Salim is my boy. It's got my favourite characters. I really like the setting. That, that game just hits every single time. Now, enough horror rubbish. Let's go on to the Gardens Between. This was one that Leechy actually put in one of his videos and that's where I got the idea. So thank you, dude. I really, really did enjoy this game. Again, a bit of a puzzler, but in a sort of weird time bendy kind of way you sort of have to fast forward and rewind time to solve puzzles and change the world state and then you can progress the trophies themselves are, are easy as hell there's like a couple of collectibles you have to get in between levels beyond that you basically just play through the game this was again a little game to calm down after doing all the dark pictures games and it's definitely going up there I, mm, i'd not sure it's quite little nightmares but it's definitely going in gravy if you haven't already go check that game out 
Honestly, you won't regret it. The Escapists. This was my first ever ultra rare platinum. I had myself some fun with this game. It was daft. It had a cool art style. It was it was just enjoyable. The trophies aren't that hard, but some of them are quite grindy and RNG based. There's a trophy you have to do for crafting one of every item in the game. I literally had to make myself an Excel spreadsheet of all of the items I crafted and then tick them off as I went along. And I will admit right now, I followed a guide for all the escapes. I'm not gonna front. Like, I'm not ashamed of that. It's, you still have to get the timings down. You still have to hope that RNG will works in your favor a little bit. But overall, I found it quite reasonable. I'm probably gonna put it in it was all right though, purely for the RNG of some of it. Tacoma, again, another one I did sort of breaking up some of the bigger games. This one was probably the weakest of the ones that I did do. I'm not sure I'd say I regret it. It was very much a walking sim where you just have to sort of piece together the story a little bit. It was cool. It was short. I'm probably just going to put it in. It was all right. Okay, this next one's probably where people are going to start getting angry. Final Fantasy 16. I loved this game. I loved the characters. I loved the setting. Side quests could have done me some more oomph especially in the beginning. My entire issue with this game comes from New Game Plus. It doesn't add anything at all. All right, it changes the location of some enemies and it's the only way to do the highest difficulty. But the problem is, is that the highest difficulty doesn't really scale very well. So if you've finished everything the game has and then start New Game Plus, you're still going to absolutely melt through everything, at least at the start. There's no optional super bosses, there's no extra dungeons to do, there's just nothing, it's just the exact same thing again. And it's not a short game. This game is what caused a lot of my burnout last year. As much as I hate to possibly have to do this, it, it kind of soured the experience enough that I kind of wish I hadn't done it straight away. Um, I wish I'd left it and come back and done it later when I hadn't literally just played through it. I feel like I'd have enjoyed it a lot more. It probably would have been much higher up on the list, but all I can do is rank it for how I experienced it and New Game Plus ruined that game for me. Let's hope the DLC can, you know, fix it a little bit. Okay, now that a bunch of you have left me in comments and unsubscribed, Comfy Talk 2, really good game. Really enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed the first game. I don't know if it speaks to me being, having worked in a coffee shop for most of my adult life. It is very much a visual novel. You make drinks for people, you talk to them, you learn about their problems. It's just nice to do. Um, some of it can be a bit confusing if you don't have a guide. I, def I did follow a guide. I 100% recommend you follow a guide because you have to make certain things for certain people on certain days. I did have some issues with this one, more than I had with the first one, should I say, where I couldn't figure out how I needed to get a certain trophy. For that, it's getting bumped down a little bit, but I'll still put it in, I quite enjoyed that. I think if it hadn't been for that one trophy that I couldn't figure out how the hell I was supposed to do it, I'd probably put this in gravy. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with where that is. The Spider-Man games. Did both of these again because I wanted to do them before Spider-Man 2. And it was the first time I'd done the DLC for Spider-Man 1 actually. So it was a bit fresh. Something a bit new. I think it cemented a lot of what I felt. I'm going to annoy Zach a little bit. Because I don't think he can argue with that. But he'll probably argue with that. I love both of these games. I thought Miles Morales, while it was short, is still an immaculate game. All of Miles' extra powers and all of that good stuff. Will I enjoy Spider-Man 2 as much? Well, you'll find out very soon. Toen, again, wanted to chill out after Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales. This is such a cute game. Like, you literally just walk around and take pictures of animals and things like that. It's just so wholesome. I don't remember anything being particularly annoying about it, but I don't know if I quite class it. Mm. You know what? Yeah, it's getting gravy. I'd say I put that on a similar level to like the gardens between. It's just so nice and so it was so pretty as well. I think it, it is on PS Plus or it was when I did it. So if it's still there, give it a go. Why not? OK, now we're getting into the good stuff. Sea of Stars is straight away going to the top. This game was was just everything I wanted. It was nostalgic for me. The art style was amazing. I really enjoyed the combat. 
I know some people argue that there's not much to it, but I personally really enjoyed it. It's almost like a puzzle. Enemies' attacks will have little symbols above them, and if you use corresponding attacks, you can knock them out of their attack, basically. I just had such a good time with it. I really did. Like, the true ending... Yeah, I could probably take or leave. But the game as a whole was just... Mwah. I I can't ask for more than that, really. And um, we'll not talk about the completionist controversy because we're not about that. But, yeah. Highly recommend that as well. I have just ordered the physical edition from... Is it IM8 bit? <sighs> I love that game. Spider-Man 2. Now. Now. I don't know if my like feelings of this are a bit skewed because I powered through that game like I think I finished it in like three three days three and a bit days from release and that was with working in between those days as well I did love it I thought the story was great I loved all the characters the gameplay was phenomenal but it just wasn't on the same level as the first two for me the additions to the open world were all right they weren't that inspiring like the suburbs and things like that in Queens is it Queens I don't know, New York. Again, some of the story beats, fantastic. I'm not going to spoil anything here. Some of the fights as well were, were so cool. I'm happy with it being there for now. Maybe if I went back to it in the future and tried it again, I might put it a bit higher, but I can't see it happening really, let's be honest. Alan Wake 2, on the other hand, is going straight to the top. Like, that was arguably my game of the year. I only got into the franchise late. Like, I only played the remaster on PS5 when that came out, and I just got sucked into this world. Like, it's so fascinating, and it's so messed up in all of the good ways. Sure, the gameplay is still not, you know, perfect. It never was for Alan Wake 1, but I just want to be back in that world again. Like, I'm so upset that it didn't last longer than it did. And that's not saying it's a short game. It's just, again, I absolutely plowed through that thing. I think I did it in about a week or two, and I just had the best time. Two games left now, and we're going to wrap up fairly soon. Bastion was one that I started on the Vita over a year ago now. I think this is the first Platinum on my new account that's taken me longer than a year. For the sort of game that Bastion is, and if you don't know, it's made by Supergiant, who made Hades, so you can kind of get the idea. It's not the best on such a small screen with the slightly more cramped controls. That is where the PlayStation Portal came in, and yes we'll talk about that at some point i'm sure once i got the portal i used that to finish off bastion and it was so much more comfortable so much easier to get my head around it's definitely not an easy game i am quite proud of this platinum um so for that it's probably gonna go into gravy just because i felt so accomplished when i finished this Last of all, we have Unpacking. I did this one on New Year's Eve because I just wanted to get another Platinum because, you know, I have problems. Again, I did enjoy it for the most part. A lot of people, specifically Trophy Pop, were telling me how good this one is because she'd done it not too long before. So I jumped in expecting this like really just nice, cozy game. I did get that, but I also got a bit frustrated. And that is purely because some of the items out of the boxes, I had the hardest time figuring out what the hell they were. There were so many like nondescript boxes and things like that where you'd unpack them in the bathroom and it turns out they needed to go in the kitchen. Some of it was a bit frustrating for me. For that reason and that reason alone, it's probably just gonna go in It Was All Right. It is a good game. It is a nice game, it's not a great game. And that is it, that is my ranking of all of my Platinum Trophies that I earned in 2023. I'm sure a lot of you are already in the comments telling me how wrong I am, how dare I put Final Fantasy 16 so low down, how dare I put Crisis Core at the bottom on its own. It's personal opinions. Like, if you can't deal with it, you probably shouldn't be on the internet. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all next time.